Hello and welcome to the Game Master How-To Series from the Army Painter. Today we're going to create an acid pool. In this short tutorial, we're going to demonstrate just how simple it is to craft your own terrain with the materials and tools included in the Game Master Dungeons & Caverns core set. First, we must prepare our XPS foam. Sanding it will give it added texture and help the paint to adhere better. Next, you'll begin marking off your tiles one inch by one inch using the steel ruler included in the box set. Using the scenery knife, you'll begin scoring the tile lines. It's important that you just lightly score the foam and not cut all the way through it. You'll find why in later steps. Now we'll mark off the perpendicular cross sections, again, one inch by one inch. And we'll repeat the scoring process to create the foundation for our tiles. It's important to remember that we are only scoring the foam and not cutting all the way through it. Now using a handy graphite pencil, we'll reinforce the tile lines. The scoring acts as a guide for the pencil for super simple, effective, and well-defined tiles. Next, using an old rock or brick as we have here, you'll stamp the brick into the foam to create added texture. You'll notice how simply the surface of the brick is mimicked onto the foam for a dramatic transformation of realistic stone tiles. If you'd like to further weather your tiles, using a graphite pencil, you can draw cracks in the stone to give it a simple, aged effect. Using cocktail sticks and a fresh piece of foam, you'll secure the tiles to the foam. The toothpick acts as reinforcement and will help keep the two pieces stable. That way you can cut two mirrored shapes using our hot wire foam cutter. Slowly and carefully trace the jagged edges to your liking. Repeat this process around each edge of the acid pool, leaving a two tile entryway on either side so you can fit modular tiles to it. Remove the cocktail sticks and you should have two perfectly mirrored pieces of foam. With the top tile piece, you'll use your hot wire foam cutter to cut the inner shape of the pool. Leave enough room for the bases of your models to fit around it, and then carefully remove the hot wire and remove the inner piece of foam. You can add a second pool by repeating this process on the other side. Now you'll want to sand the bottoms to each piece of foam to ensure that the glue adheres to it. Apply your XPS foam sculpting glue. And then carefully adhere the two pieces together. You can now begin to add even more realistic texture to them. Start by applying our XPS foam glue in random spots on the tile. Using a wash brush, spread out the glue to the shape that you desire. Then sprinkle the Game Master scenery sand on top of the glue. And once the glue is dried, you can shake off the excess. Don't worry if you make a mess, you can always reuse any leftover sand for later projects. To give the acid pool a fluid look, you want to apply a generous layer of the XPS foam sculpting glue inside the bottom of it. Use a wash brush to smooth out the glue for even coverage. As the glue sets, you can use the brush to create subtle ripples and waves. In a well-ventilated area, give your dungeon and subterrain spray primer a good shake and begin applying a smooth, even coat to your tile. When you're finished priming, clean the nozzle by spraying upside down until the pigment stops emitting from the nozzle. Using cavern base paint and a large dry brush, you'll apply your first base coat to the cavern tiles. Be sure to get good solid coverage, but it's okay if some of the primer is left in the recesses.
Next, you'll apply a dry brush of Cavern Highlights using your large dry brush. Apply the paint to the bristles and remove some of the excess paint onto a towel, leaving only the remaining pigment behind. Then lightly flick the bristles across the raised details to pick out the highlights. You'll follow the same technique with Cavern Effects, this time being more conservative with your application on only the most extreme hard edges. We'll use our subterrain wash to help darken down the rocks on the tile base. Apply this generally over top of these rocky features. With Dungeon Base and a medium dry brush, we'll begin base coating all of the rocky features on the tile. Then we'll apply a dry brush highlight of Dungeon Highlights to the rocks just to help pick out the details. We'll apply a final highlight using Dungeon Effects, being very conservative with this application, only using it on the most extreme raised edges. Add some subterrain wash to your palette and using the wash brush, begin feathering in this color randomly around the stones and other parts of the tiles to create an aged and mossy effect. With a wash brush and grotto slime, we're going to base coat the bottom of the pool. To save some time, you can carefully apply this paint right from the dropper bottle to the bottom. Then using a wash brush, spread it around for nice and evenly distributed coverage. Once you're finished with the first pool, go ahead and apply it to the second. Once our first application is dried, we'll apply a second coat. Grotto Slime is a glossy paint. Applying it in these heavier layers will help make the pool look even more fluid. Now we're just going to apply some tiny blots of Grotto Slime. We're going to apply this sporadically across the base of the pools. Next we'll apply a bit of our subterrain wash right on top of the blots of Grotto Slime. While the two paints are still wet and workable, we will swirl them together to give it a magical oozing look. Using a cylindrical brush guard, we're going to apply even smaller dots of the subterranean wash sporadically across the pools to give the illusion that we have popping bubbles happening on top of this acid pool. This is a fun technique that Thomas in the studio came up with while making this acid pool.
We'll move on to mixing a bit of Brink Black with our subterrain wash. We'll use this mixture to reinforce the swirling effect to really give off that oozing appearance. Next, we'll mix Dungeon Effects and Grotto Slime together, and we'll use this to apply small dots across the pool. This will give the illusion of bubbles floating to the top of the surface. With a bit of XPS foam glue, our dungeon tufts, and a tweezer from the Army Painter tool range, we'll begin applying some foliage to our tiles in random areas. With the tufts added, our acid pool is now complete. If you followed along, then you've just learned how simple, easy, and fun it can be to create your own cavern terrain with the tools and materials found inside the Game Master Dungeons and Caverns core set. Made for adventurers by the Army Painter.